When a 40,000-ton amphibious assault ship boasts an electromagnetic catapult deck rivaling that of an aircraft carrier, along with an entire fleet of stealthy unmanned carrier-based aircraft, should we call it a landing ship or a light aircraft carrier? This question has become unprecedentedly concrete and sharp with the unveiling and subsequent developments of the Type 076 amphibious assault ship, the Suchuan. Recently, a report by the U.S. website Wardsony sent shockwaves through the military community, claiming that a new stealth drone had been deployed for testing on the deck of China's Type 076 amphibious assault ship. Based on its appearance, this drone is highly likely to be derived from the family of unmanned wingmen showcased in previous naval parades. It has been identified by observers as the C-type drone, characterized by its swept lambda wing configuration, swept back tail, internal weapons bay, and dorsal air intake. Its deployment aboard the ship is far more than a simple equipment installation. It signifies that the Type 076, the world's first catapult-equipped amphibious assault ship, is rapidly transforming the theoretical concept of a drone carrier into operational capability. This development compels us to reassess how the nature of maritime power is being reshaped. To grasp the impact of the Type 076, one must first understand its nature as a warship. The Sichuan-class carrier, launched in late 2024 with a full load displacement exceeding 40,000 tons, stands at the pinnacle of amphibious assault ships by sheer size alone. Yet what sets it apart are two revolutionary configurations, an electromagnetic catapult and a resting gear system, coupled with a unique dual island design. The electromagnetic catapult serves as a golden key for integrating unmanned aerial vehicles onto aircraft carriers. Traditional steam catapults deliver forceful thrust that is difficult to fine-tune, posing overload risks to the relatively fragile structures of UAVs. In contrast, Electromagnetic catapults offer precisely adjustable power output. Like a skilled engineer, they can deliver the optimal force to smoothly launch UAVs of varying weights and models. This grants the Type 076 deck exceptional adaptability, providing optimal launch conditions for everything from lightweight reconnaissance drones to heavy stealth combat aircraft like the Attack 21. The dual island design embodies a highly specialized command philosophy. The forward island focuses on navigation and fleet command while the aft island oversees aviation operations, including the coordination of drones, helicopters, and manned carrier-based aircraft. In complex electromagnetic environments, this division effectively prevents command link congestion, elevating both the efficiency and safety of air operations to new heights. These two features alone distinguish the Type 076 from traditional amphibious assault ships, primarily focused on helicopter assault capabilities. The focal point of recent U.S. media attention the stealth drone deployed on the Type 076 represents the most critical piece of the puzzle. Its classification as a Type C drone inherently positions it on the same trajectory as the collaborative combat aircraft, currently under intensive development in the US a high-end, multi-purpose unmanned combat platform. It is not merely a cruise missile or disposable attack drone, but a versatile asset capable of conducting deep strikes, frontline reconnaissance, electronic warfare, and even serving as a loyal wingman accompanying manned fighters. Its stealth capabilities enable it to penetrate dense air defense networks, clearing pathways for follow-on strikes or conducting prolonged surveillance missions in high-risk airspace. When combined with the Type 076 electromagnetic catapult system, the synergy is remarkable. Traditional amphibious assault ship's air power is constrained by short takeoff, vertical landing aircraft, whose range and payload capacity remain limiting factors. The Type 076, however, can launch unmanned combat platforms via catapult that offer greater range, heavier payloads, and performance closer to land-based fighters. This expands strike rad -E and tactical flexibility by several orders of magnitude. This wave of unmanned aerial systems integrating onto ships is not unique to the Type 076 but represents a microcosm of a global military transformation. Turkey has developed the TB-3 drone with foldable wings specifically for its Anadolu amphibious assault ship. The United States, in addition to integrating the MQ-25 Stingray unmanned aerial refueling aircraft into carrier strike groups, is actively testing models like the MQ-9B for use on amphibious ships. Even Iran has converted merchant vessels into mobile platforms capable of launching and recovering stealth drones. Naval forces worldwide have embraced unmanned aerial vehicles for obvious reasons. They offer relatively low costs, eliminate pilot life risks, enable prolonged operations in high-threat environments, and can form saturation attacks or distributed reconnaissance networks through swarm tactics. However, achieving safe takeoffs and landings for large fixed-wing UAVs on the undulating decks of warships presents a formidable technical hurdle. 
The complex electromagnetic environment on board, limited landing space, and precise coordination with the resting gear pose hellish challenges to the UAV's autonomous control system and ship aircraft coordination capabilities. The failure of the USX 47B program here underscores this difficulty. Precisely because of this, the successful integration of electromagnetic catapults with advanced UAVs on the Type 076 carries extraordinary significance. It suggests China may have achieved a critical breakthrough in the core challenge of ship aircraft coordination for carrier based UAVs. As we marvel at the Type 076's formidable aviation potential, a fundamental question emerges. With such an emphasis on air combat capabilities, is the Type 076 still purely an amphibious assault ship? Will it follow the U.S. Navy's historical detour, sacrificing amphibious capabilities for aviation? This question leads us to the well-documented evolution of America-class amphibious assault ships. The first two vessels, USS America and USS Tripoli, adopted a distinctly unconventional design approach. To maximize capacity for F-35B short takeoff, vertical landing fighters and MV-22 Osprey tiltrotors, they boldly eliminated the traditional stern well deck. This design significantly expanded their hangar space and aviation fuel storage, transforming them into veritable medium-light aircraft carriers when carrying 20 F-35Bs. This reflected the prevailing light carrier concept at the time, aiming to compensate for carrier shortages with amphibious ships. However, eliminating the well deck meant sacrificing amphibious assault capabilities, the ship could no longer carry hovercraft or amphibious assault vehicles for traditional beach landings. This sparked strong opposition from the U.S. Marine Corps, as an amphibious assault ship incapable of delivering tanks and troops ashore severely undermined the independent combat capability of amphibious ready groups. Consequently, starting with the third ship, the USS Bougainville, the America-class design reverted to tradition by reinstating the well deck seeking a balance between aviation capabilities and amphibious projection. So, how will the Type 076, now forging its own path, make its choice? Based on currently available information, the Type 076 appears to be attempting a third path beyond the American model. The key lies in its two core features, electromagnetic catapult launch and a primary focus on unmanned aerial vehicles. Unlike the America class, which relies on the F-35B, the Type 076 UAVs do not require complex vertical takeoff and landing operations on the flight deck. Instead, they launch via catapult and land via resting gear, a process closer to traditional carriers, potentially simplifying deck structure requirements. Additionally, unmanned aircraft themselves do not require pilot living quarters, and their maintenance support facilities may be more compact than those for manned fighters. This implies that the Type 076 may not need to sacrifice hangar space entirely, as the America class did, to accommodate its air wing. It could potentially retain a significant hangar capacity while still possessing ample hangar space and deck handling capabilities to operate large numbers of unmanned aircraft. In other words, the revolutionary aspect of the Type 076 lies in its attempt to achieve both formidable air assault capabilities and reliable amphibious projection through technological and conceptual advancements, rather than simple spatial trade-offs. Returning to our initial question, will the Type 076 ultimately become a full-fledged aircraft carrier? From a long-term technological perspective, unmanned combat systems will only grow more prevalent in warfare. Should the variety and quantity of carrier-based UAVs on the Type 076 continue to expand? along with their operational scope. It is conceivable that subsequent batches might feature reduced well deck space and optimized aviation layouts to maximize aircraft sortie rates and support capabilities. However, its fundamental nature will remain determined by the nation's overall maritime strategy and amphibious warfare requirements. It represents not merely an additional vessel class, but an exploration of a new model for naval warfare. When the Type 076 flight deck is occupied by drones, it sparks profound reflection on the definition and future of maritime power.